No, it's me again. Uh, okay, just some studies uh, in the Book of Mormon as well as uh, a little bit in Thessalonians. Going New Testament a little bit today. But first we're going to talk, uh, I want to cover some scriptures in uh, mostly in Third Nephi, and it's mostly the Savior speaking. Um, so... Um, this is concerning people that have either left the church um, or never re were really involved in it, maybe baptized as a as a eight year old or or thereabouts, and then never really really involved, as well as people that have been involved in and have done some things that they found themselves on the outside looking in, and uh, I I. I studied this a long time ago, actually, and I just feel impressed to to share it now for some reason. Um, I obviously apply all of the scriptures to myself first. Um, it's just, um, I don't know, it's just the way I, I like to do things. So I'm always thinking of, of, of how this could apply to me. Um, but 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 maybe maybe this will be helpful for some. Okay, so I'm going to go to verse 32, and I would encourage. Uh, oh, sorry, Third Nephi 18 verse 32. So uh, just to give a little background um, of of this, the Savior speaking. He's talking about people who have who have found themselves on the outside looking in that may have a desire to come back, come back to the fold, right? So he, he says this in verse 32, and, and it'd be good probably if you read some of the verses before that, but nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out of your synagogues. And of course, uh, it's him, not her, but I, I think that's totally great. It's the Savior. He can say whatever he wants. Nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out of your synagogues. This is for someone who's not really, you know, a, a good person. Um, so, sorry about that. So, we have to um, think of that. Um, Nevertheless, you shall not cast him out of your synagogues or your places of worship. For unto such shall ye continue to minister. And we talk a lot about ministering in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, for, for ye know not, but that what they... Let me start over. Nevertheless, ye shall not cast him out of your synagogues or places of worship. For unto such shall ye continue to minister, for ye know not but what they will return and repent and come unto me with full purpose of heart, and I shall heal them, and ye shall be the means of bringing salvation unto them. And how, how do we um, bring salvation unto them? by leading them to Christ. Christ is the one that heals them. I think too often we in the, in the church think that we're going to fix people. Um, we lead them to Christ, invite them to come into Christ if, they, if, if we feel impressed to do so, right, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And then, and then Christ heals them. Um, they they have to decide to come unto him. But I want to focus on those two, uh, three words actually, return and repent. Now think of the order of that. So, and I think it's significant. It's not repent and then return. It's return. And you could say to the gospel, to Christ, to coming to church if you want. Um, but they, someone can return in, in however you want to define returning. I'd say it's repenting or, or turning to Christ, okay? And, and if they return, then they can repent. I think, I think the mistake we make often uh, within the, the church, um, the, the community, uh, if you will, is, is that we require people to repent first before they can return. And 
obviously, you know, we all need to repent, right? But I'm talking about someone who's done some things that really finds themselves on the outside looking in. Now, Having said that, let's look at some other let's look at some other verses, okay? Just to just to to know that that isn't a one one time thing. Let's let's go to twenty four, third Nephi twenty four. Um, this is a good one. Uh, ver, uh, verse seven: Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from mine ordinances. So this is in Malachi, right? and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Now that's interesting. The ordinances. So let's, 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 I'm going to come back to 3rd Nephi, but I want to go from that scripture, I want to go to section 109, and this has to do with the, dedic the, the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. So if we go to section 109, um, ba, 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 ba. um now where is that section 109 i think okay here it is so this is section 109 of the doctrine of covenants so it's the dedicatory prayer the kirtland temple so we're talking about ordinances okay okay uh i'll start in verse 17 though that all the incomings of thy people into this house. So we're talking about people that are going to make covenants. May be in the name of the Lord. That all their outgoings from this house may be in the name of the Lord. Now, you don't need to tell me that the full endowment wasn't done in the Kirtland Temple. I understand that. But these were the, where the keys were restored and sacred things happened there. So we're going to treat it the same as any other temple uh, in that sense. Okay. Um, th this is where it all began in the latter days, that all their outgoings from this house may be in the name of the Lord. And it, it, meaning that once you've experienced the temple in your life, you're, it's going to stay with you and you're going to, um, and I should say experience the Lord in the temple or, right, okay. And that all your, their salutations may be in the name of the Lord. It's all about Christ. With, with holy hands uplifted to the Most High. And that no unclean thing shall be permitted to come into thy house to pollute it. Now listen to this. And when thy people transgress any of them. So thy people, we've talked about my people, his people, the chosen people. Um, his seed, okay? People that have made covenants. People that have made covenants. And when thy people transgress any of them, they may speedily repent and return. Hmm. Now over here in 3rd Nephi, it said return and then repent. So here's the deal. In my opinion, in my opinion. Um when we've made sacred covenants in the house of the Lord, then we have to repent before we can return into that house. Okay? So that's my opinion. Um, that's the difference between return and repent and repent and return. Return and repent is, is for people that have just through life of want to change and want to come unto the Savior. And, and we can facilitate that by inviting them to come unto Christ and then Christ can heal them and, and then they can go through the steps of repentance after they've returned, right? What section 109 is talking about of people that have already done that and made covenants, sacred covenants, and then turned their back on the Lord. Doing serious misdeeds, sins, and, and then, in order to get back into the house of the Lord, they have to repent first. They can't just return and then work out their problems, right? Okay, so, so that's, that, that's kind of what I, I wanted to, uh, to, to talk about a little bit. But let's, let's go back to 3rd Nephi again, and we'll, we'll uh, uh, look at another verse here. Ba, 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 ba. This is uh, 24, 3 Nephi 24, 18. 
Then shall ye return and discern. Uh, I love this. Between the righteous and the wicked. So you will return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So when you return, your eyes are going to be opened up and you're going to see what's going on. You're going to know a lot more about right from wrong because you're going to have the Holy Ghost with you, right? Okay, so that's a good one. Uh, let's look at. Let's just look at a couple more, just so you know that it, this isn't a one-time shot in in the scriptures. And I'm referring to a few. There's probably many more. Um, this is chapter ten in Third Nephi, and isn't it interesting that Christ is the one that's saying all this about returning to Him? Um, this is verse six in chapter ten of Third Nephi. O ye house of Israel whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you? Uh, and I love that it's not that I would have, that I, that I will. <laughs> how oft will I gather you as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? If ye will repent and return. So the reason, in my opinion, why that's a repent and return is because they're covenant people, Okay. First shall be last, the last shall be first, right? Unto me, so, re, so repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart, fully committed, fully vested. Okay, so that's good. Um, should we look up one more? Let's, let's look up one in Helaman 13, because we're going to be reading that next week in our reading assignment, and we can pick up on that. This is Helaman 13, verse 11. But if ye will repent and return unto the Lord your God, I will turn away my anger, mine anger with the Lord. Yea, thus saith the Lord, blessed are they who will repent and turn into, into me, or excuse me, unto me, but woe unto him that repenteth not. So this is talking about people that have fallen away. And that's how you can kind of tell. If they've had the covenant, if they've made the covenant, it's going to say, you got to repent first before you can return into full fellowship. If you've kind of just found yourself for most of your life, or you're not a member of the faith, or you just don't really, uh, have never really been in, involved, um, um, th then you can return and, and figure out your repentance later. And I had a lot of wonderful, awesome experiences as a mission president and as a stake president, watching people come back, um, turning towards their savior and, and then working out, you know, I used to call them the gory details. Um, but, but really, um, Christ does heal and he heals those that turn to him. And it can be immediate. It can be immediate. So that's, uh, there, there's some other scriptures. Moroni 9.22 um, is another one. Um, you can look that one up after. So that's, that's just something I wanted to, to, to talk about a little bit today. Um, now, <laughs> here's, here's one that I ran across. This is in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now this is, this is the amongst uh, most of our Christian friends, but but we we should embrace the scripture too. It, 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 the, the last couple of verses talk about what we what what um, I guess may, we'll say Protestant folks. Um, many of them feel are is the key rapture scripture, right? We've talked about this scripture, or or the 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 caught up you know, being caught up, being translated, scripture. A few verses prior to this is one I stumbled upon, and I thought it was really, really good. And maybe it's the qualification to, uh, the simple qualification to get caught up. I don't know. Um, I'll let you guys decide that. But I'm going to start in verse 9 of chapter 4 in 1 Thessalonians. But touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. So basically, in my opinion, uh, Paul's saying, 
you know, Christ has already told you this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but you need to love one another. So I list that as number one, love, love, love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Ye improve, right? Now listen to this. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands. And then verse 12, that ye may walk honestly towards them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. So I've kind of boiled it down to love, be quiet, shut up, kind of harsh, but study to be quiet. So, <laughs> so love, um, be quiet or, or shut up, right? Okay. Uh, work hard, mind your own business, do your own business or mind your own business. And then the last is give of your substance, seek people out that you can share with. And then, and then you will lack nothing uh, in taking care of yourself by taking care of others. So I think that's just Paul's good, sound advice for good Christian behavior, right, right there. So love, be quiet, work hard, mind your own business, and give of your substance. That's from those few verses is what I got. So that's all I have for you. Um, thanks for watching, listening and uh, being patient with me and allowing me to both repent and return and return and repent in my daily life. And uh, hopefully we'll, we, we won't feel like this is for somebody else. It's, it's for all of us on a daily basis. Obviously, some's more serious than others, right? But, but I think those are really good verses for us to contemplate. And I am out of here.